This is meteorologist Mark Mulner, and as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Eastern and Weather Eastern as well. We're going to take a look at the world of weather, the tropics. Is the sleepy Atlantic going to finally awake over the next 7 to 10 days? I'll take a look and break it down for you in a hot spot that I'll be looking at out in the Atlantic over the next 7 to 10 days. I'll take you through that. Also, from the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, anything brewing? I'll break it down for you. In the Eastern Pacific, there could be an area as well. And in North America, how about that heat dome, high pressure out west, scorching, a relentless ridge spreading east, heat scorching the plains to the southeast as well. And severe weather on Sunday in the northeast translates to potential for some isolated severe in the southeast as well. In the description down below, don't forget there is that Hurricane 2021 outlook. It hasn't changed. I don't see any reason to change it as of yet. So go ahead and have a watch if you haven't already. Also, smash the like button. Gets the video some more uh, attention. And also, subscribe. Hit the notification bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Comment or question in the comment section down below if you wish. And we're going to get right into it in this wild world of weather. And taking a look at the tropics, here we go. You're probably wondering why the heck, what is going on with the tropics? Why is it so quiet as of late? Well, shh, you don't want to say that too loud. Uh, because uh, just when you think things are uh, on the down, they, things are kicking back on the up. And that's what I'm thinking here. We're going to start seeing some more action here, especially going into August. Just the first week of August, from August 3rd to August 7th. Uh, that yellow area from just off the coast of Africa all the way to the Lesser Antilles, uh, that's where I'm going to be looking at a 20% chance for development. The GFS and some of the other uh, models are kind of starting to hint at some sort of action developing, some sort of area of low pressure uh, just southwest to the Cape Verde Islands. We have some very vigorous waves coming off the coast of Africa, so... I think this area is fair game. I think the models are grabbing onto something really interesting here. And especially from like the August 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, we'll really need to watch it because something could develop out of this. This could be a potentially our next named storm out here in the Atlantic. And then back across the eastern Pacific, you see where the intertropical convergence zone is really far to the south here. We have a lot of waves moving out of the Caribbean and into the eastern Pacific. I'm pretty certain here something is going to develop over the next week. So we'll probably have our next name storm in the eastern Pacific as well. Across the rest of the tropics, nothing really uh, feature rich here. Uh, but I do want to make note, the water temperatures are really warming up from the Atlantic all the way into the Gulf and Caribbean. So Above average temperatures here. Something's going to develop. Gulf of Mexico. Well, there's not too much to talk about here. We have some sort of upper level low off the west coast of Cuba here. Uh, it's not really that interesting. I don't see any development happening here. And we have clusters of showers and thunderstorms that always typically occur along the Gulf Coast this time of year. There's no any really persistent areas. Uh, that's where we got to look for if there's a persistent area. But I don't see any at the current time. And taking a look at the Atlantic satellite photo, your eyes are really drawn not to the Western Atlantic, Caribbean, or the Gulf. It's really drawn to the lower right-hand corner of the screen off the coast of Africa, Cape Verde season. This is where we're going to see some explosive development over the next couple weeks. So watch for that. Look at those tropical waves. Those are really getting to be very strong, and there's some very warm water temperatures to work with here. Here's that GFS model. This is the most interesting run of the tropics. Now, I know this is a bit of a stretch because I'm going all the way out here. Uh, this takes us all the way from this weekend all the way through five days next week, August, uh, basically August 3rd, August 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and beyond. Um, it is interesting to note in the 66 hour that the GFS is already trying to s hint that something is sort of developing there. You can see uh, the spin up there and the it does close off some area of low pressure system as it moves just north of the Lesser Antilles. It, it's not we're not trying to get into any tracks here. We're getting the big idea here and the pattern is for big development to start occurring here in the Cape Verde season. So if, it, if you've been tired of the sleepy Atlantic, it's not going to last much longer. Eastern Pacific 2, big boom here in the Eastern Pacific. Something really blossoming on the GFS come later next week. So want to watch out for that as well. And taking a look at the CMC model, there is some subtle hints uh, early to middle part of next week too. You can see the um, 
development there in the intertropical convergence zone, kind of hinting at some sort of disorganized area of low pressure trying to close off here, especially towards the, you know, later next week. Um, so we'll have to watch it here. All three major models are hinting at something potentially developing here. So getting a little bit exciting here in the world of the tropics. If we take a look at the euro here, it shows it to a little bit of a lesser extent uh, across the Atlantic. There is some hint that some sort of closed off low will start trying to form sometime in the middle part of next week um, into the following week. So we'll have to watch it. The euro is even kind of hinting it here. Not so much as strong as the GFS, um, but the details are there, and that's what counts. And Joe Drejos here from Johnson City, New York. Big thunderstorms rolling into the area with severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, look at that. Look at that beautiful cloud formation pushing into the Johnson City area. This is indicative of that strong updraft, downdraft type scenario you have moving in with these line of thunderstorms. So very nice capture here. Uh, Joe Drehouse from the Johnson City, New York, Upper Susquehanna River Delta region. Thanks for sending that in. And Rubber Stone. This was back on the night, the evening of the Thunder Moon, back on July 23rd this year. Uh, looking really nice captures here. Uh, Robert Stone, nice capture of the Thunder Moon. Thank you for sending those photos in. Nice captures. And John from Beckham Street, Little England, New York. Look at this. We have a heat wave in progress across the region from July 25th to July 27th. So nice captures there, John, from the sweltering area of Little England, New York, Beckham Street. Upper Air Parrot and across North America. Look at that big ridge out west. It just keeps getting bigger, doesn't it? Look at that subtropical ridge all the way up into western Canada, parts of Alaska. As all of these low pressure systems riding high away from the west area, basically the western two-thirds of North America, the drought continuing to worsen, wildfires expanding, temperatures continuing to build, that huge heat dome building east, especially across the plains and Texas and the southeast, just not looking very good. There it is in the northeast, that cooler pool, with that troughiness, although troughiness usually is associated with active weather. We won't see too much in the way of active weather, just that one day Sunday. And precipitation totals across North America. Wow, we look like we're seeing a lot of rain here. Now, the pattern will start to somewhat break down um, across the Intermountain West. So we'll start to get some uh, areas of moisture, which is good news. And into the southeast, we have that stalled out frontal boundary. So, you know, later when this uh, heat wave finally decides to break next week, we will get some showers and thunderstorm activity here and some tropical moisture there off the North Carolina coast. Interesting to see a lot of that in the Northeast. That is with your response to uh, that severe weather outbreak that could occur on Sunday. And here it is Friday across the Northeast. This is one of the cooler days we've seen in quite some time. Um, we have a low, very low humidity and oh, clear blue skies setting in across the region. We have that area low pressure kicking out of the Northeast uh, behind it. Northwest winds kicking in. We have some showers up by Burlington, north of Concord and Bangor, Maine. And for the rest of the Northeast, we'll be staying dry. Uh, low to mid-70s is very popular. We'll still be in 87 near Harrisburg, 90 in D.C., 87 in Atlantic City, but 73 in Binghamton, even cooling down in New York City, 82. And Friday across the Southeast, look at this. Hot. It, it, it's just... The, the heat is expanding from the West, and it's literally expanding into the Central and the Eastern part of the country, especially the Southeast, not the Northeast. But there it is. Anywhere south of that stalled out frontal boundary across uh, Tennessee over to Virginia. Look at that. 99 in Nashville, 94 in Tampa, 98 in Houston, 96 in New Orleans, 98 in both Birmingham and Atlanta. This is just a scorcher. Charleston as well. We do have the chance of a strong to severe thunderstorm just east of Nashville over by Raleigh and south of Norfolk. Uh, the damaging wind, large hail. It's not going to be a big severe weather, widespread outbreak, but enough to uh, cause some problems here. Uh, across parts of the area. So watch out for that. The big story will be continuing the, the heat and Saturday across the Northeast. Look at this. This is quite a really nice Saturday to say the least here. Look at that. It's um, We actually have some showers uh, into southern Ontario and parts of western New York and uh, extreme St. Lawrence River Valley up there, but that only accounted to meet less than 20% chance. For the most part, we're looking at upper 70s, mid to upper 70s across the area, 77 in Scranton, 76 in 
Binghamton, look at that, 70. Cooling down in Concord, both Toronto and Bangor, Maine, 68 and 69 respectively there. 79 below 80 in New York City for the first time in quite some time. And Saturday across the southeast, look at this. Um, yeah, Stalled off frontal boundary, slowly slipping to the south. We fall a couple degrees here in Atlanta, down to 94. I mean, you'll notice it slightly, but really when you get in temperatures this high, it's negligible. 96 in Charleston, 99 in Houston. Again, it's like a broken record. 94 in Panama City. It's going to be really heating up here as well. 20 to 30 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly uh, just east of Alabama here. So Nashville, Raleigh, Norfolk, Panama City. Panama City, you might actually stay dry most of the day. Tampa, Miami, Birmingham, and Atlanta. Chance of a stray shower or thunderstorm. And Sunday across the Northeast. This is probably the worst day uh, across the Northeast out of the next several days. Um, it looking uh, rather stormy. And you have the warm front pushing in from the west, especially the mid to late morning hours. And then the cold front approaching late afternoon. Showers and numerous showers and thunderstorms will be likely, especially in the darker greens and the yellow zone. There's a yellow zone slight risk of severe thunderstorms. Extending from Pittsburgh State College, Binghamton, Syracuse, Buffalo, and Erie. Um, this will be the zone for damaging wind, large hail, frequent lightning, and flooding rain potential. Um, so uh, rainfall anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of an inch widespread upwards of locally higher over an inch likely and some of the more persistent showers and thunderstorm activities. So there you have it. This is looking like the stormiest day of the week or the weekend for that matter across the northeast. And Sunday across the southeast here. Look at that. Wow. Um, we're starting to like drop a few degrees, especially in Nashville. Look at that. 90. Raleigh also 89 in Norfolk. 89. We're getting below 90 here. Strong thunderstorms potential. Eastern part of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. A damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornadoes possible for your Sunday. So this is not looking very good. We have a vigorous low pressure system forming along the stalled out stationary front. I mean, conditions don't look right for a, a major severe weather outbreak, but there will be some scattered strong to severe thunderstorms here. So you're going to want to watch for that there, especially into the yellow shading. Across the rest of the southeast, a chance of a scattered stray shower thunderstorm. Look at that. Houston, it's like a broken record every day. 99 degrees and 95 in Tampa, 92 in Panama City, 91 in Atlanta. So there you have it. And here it is Monday across the northeast. Uh, we have that frontal boundary kicking to the east. Uh, most areas from the I-81 corridor on eastward, mostly a chance of a stray morning shower. By, you know, later in the day, this will all be kicked out to the east. Look at it. It's really cooling off near Buffalo, 71 and 72 in Erie. Off the Great Lakes, 72 in Syracuse, 67 in Burlington, and 68 in Toronto. Uh, closer to the coastline, we're still holding on to 80s and upper 70s, 79 in Boston. 84 in Harrisburg, though, continuing to remain toasty near D.C. at 86. And Monday across the southeast, that stalled out frontal boundary continues to slowly sink to the south here, cooling things down, places like Nashville, Birmingham, Atlanta, even Panama City dropping below 90. But we have that chance of a strong thunderstorms uh, from southern Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina an extreme northern panhandle of Florida. So we will be cooling things down, but we'll also be getting a bit more stormy for your Monday. Extended outlook from my hometown viewers from Big Invergen Scranton's Upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York into northeast Pennsylvania. Look at this. Friday, Saturday, looking very beautiful. Mid-70s both days. Uh, really good sleeping weather, too. Look at that. Not bad. 49. Look at that down to Saturday morning. It's Sunday where that big cold front approaches from the northwest. Showers, thunderstorms, some could contain damaging wind, large hail, frequent lightning, torrential downpours. Flooding potential is there. Upwards of 78 degrees. It will feel a bit more humid on your Sunday. So especially between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. is the strongest thunderstorms into Monday. Maybe a stray shower before like 8 or 9 a.m. Otherwise turning mostly sunny. Look at that. Beautiful. Ratherly, no humidity into Tuesday as well. This the whole week looking beautiful. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Facebook, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Uh, Twitter at WX Northeastern. Definitely follow me on social media. I have micro updates that I put out. 
Also, if we want to uh, look at my website, mediamark.com and weathernortheastern.com. And as always, thank you for supporting the channel.